Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things Canvas. In case you're new, my name's Lauren and on this channel, we love to discuss all things Canvas LMS and teaching related. I am so excited for this video today because we are talking about how you can create station activities within Canvas. I'm sure in your classroom, you have incorporated some sort of station rotation at tables. As a science teacher, I've done it multiple times. So I'm gonna show you an example of a station rotation which is actually completely digital so whether you're in the classroom and you are one-to-one -one or you're a completely fully online teacher this video is gonna apply to you now of course you're gonna want to stick around till the end because I'm going to show you how you can access this template that I give you a tour of for free so make sure you stick around to the end so before we get into the nitty-gritty of the video I would absolutely love it if you would give this video a like and share it with a friend who maybe needs some assistance with their canvas LMS and of course subscribe I have so many more tips in store for this channel so if you would subscribe stick around for a while I would greatly appreciate it all right let's get into the video going to show you what a station rotation activity can look like within Canvas. This is a module that I created. Uh, it is, of course, a science module because I was a science teacher, but you can apply station rotation activities for any subject, for any grade level. They are great. And you'll notice that I have stations in like quotations, and that is because the stations that I've created here are all just with within Canvas. So meaning like the read it is a reading within Canvas, the watch it is they're just videos, research it is a website, and then explore it is like an online simulation activity. So these are essentially the stations that are all virtual. Now you don't have to create virtual activities. There are many times where I did like 10 different stations. So I would have 10 different assignments where the instructions were all within Canvas. And I also had a little card on the table that would say like, go to station eight in Canvas. From there, the students would read the activity together. And then maybe they performed some sort of lab exercise or had some matching cards at their table in person. But then they would have to, let's say it's a matching game, take a photo with their computer and then insert it into Canvas. So I saw that they put it in the correct order. So you can really make this like a hybrid activity depending on what you want to do. So let's just kind of give you a basic tour of this module. As you can see here, we start with the module overview and you'll actually notice if I zoom in, it says view. So this is actually a requirement within the module. If you're not super familiar with requirements, they are contained within the three dots of your module and you click edit and you'll notice right here, here are my requirements. Students must complete every single item and I've added all of these items that then show up within the module. So for example, for the module overview, which is just a summary of the entire module lesson, the students must view before they can move on to the next thing. Uh, for phenomena, this is a discussion board on what waves are in the real world. It provides questions and students respond after watching a video. In order for students to move on from this, they must contribute to the discussion. Then we have a prior knowledge evaluation, which is essentially like a diagnostic quiz, a formative quiz too. So they are assessing what do they already know about the topic. And so all they have to do is submit. There doesn't need to be a certain grade. They just have to submit the quiz. Then we get into the actual like activities or inquiry activities or station activities, whatever you want to call them. This is just an instruction page. So they'll view this. That's the requirement. And then you'll notice for all the four activities we have here, students Students must submit before they can move on to the next thing. Now the post knowledge evaluation, which is identical to the prior knowledge evaluation, uh, they must score at least a 13.5 out of 18 points in order to show competency and move on to finish the module. So that is just kind of a basic overview of the module. Now we're going to go into each page. I'm going to show you essentially give you some ideas and tips on how you could use this for yourself also. 
All right. So the first page is the module overview page. So this basically just gives, you know, the learning goal, the standard that's being covered, the lesson outcomes, and then the sections, or let's just say all the different elements within the module that students can review and complete so they can click on each thing and kind of review and go back if needed. Now for you, if you decide to download this, you can always click edit and insert your own learning goals like so. Uh, and each box is editable for you as a template. I just wanted to show that to you guys. And then we'll move on to the first activity, the discussion activity. So we have some basic instructions. So we have this video here which is essentially about waves in the real world. And then we have some guiding questions that students will reply to. So they would just click the reply button, start typing, post their response. And then once other students have created their post, they will write back to those students. Oh, like you saw this or I saw that, you know, just adding to uh, the questions and discussion. Really nice way to kind of start the lesson module off. Then they will uh, have a prior knowledge evaluation or a pretest, and you can just see this is a very short test. Uh, we've got the instructions here, and then they will just answer multiple choice questions, submit for a grade, and you'll see I got zero because I didn't answer anything. <laughs> but then they can review their correct and incorrect answers. Now, of course, if you would like to edit this, again, the entire Thing is edible, even the question. So if you want to edit these questions yourself, you most certainly could and input your own uh, answers and things like that. Moving on to the next, which is where we kind of get started with that like station rotation activity instructions. So right here we have, you will now complete wave inquiry activities by selecting next at the bottom of the page, or they can even click on each activity here. Now you can add as many activities as you would like, uh, but to complete, read all the instructions, complete the activity, answer the questions provided in the attached document. Submit your document before you move on to the next one, and then you should complete the activities listed below. It can be in order. It doesn't have to be in order. I just had this here. So they'll click next, or actually, let me just show you real quick how I have linked these so they can actually like skip around if they like to, but we'll just click next for now, go through this in the order it's provided in. Okay, we have directions up top, which basically tell the student you're gonna read this and then you're going to answer some questions. So let's look at this real quick in student view, just so you guys have a better idea of what it's like. So we can click new attempt because I did this earlier and you'll notice this is the activity or questions essentially that the students will be answering based on the reading provided. So then what they're going to do is they're going to click when they're done, uh, submit assignment, and then they get confetti and they're going to move on to the next activity or station. Now again, these are very basic instructions and you should insert your own instructions here, especially if you have an activity that requires the students to perform some sort of activity in person versus like on the computer. You should include all of the major instructions as well. But next is a video activity. So this is just taken from YouTube. Then students, of course, would be able to annotate this page, add text, like so, and then answering the questions, submit, and move on to the next station rotation assignment. And the next one is a research it. This is really cool. This one, I have actually embedded essentially a web page, a website. So we're learning all about waves in this module. We've got some really awesome simulated wave images here. They have a lot of like movement, very engaging stuff that I wanted to include in the page. But of course, if for whatever reason, it's really hard to see because you'll notice the display is not perfect. Every device is going to have a different width. So if it's really hard to see, I always include a link so that way students can go to the actual site and view it themselves if they are struggling with the Canvas page. 
But for you, the, the teacher who wants to adapt this, let's leave the student view and I will show you exactly where you're going to insert your link. We're going to click edit. We're going to that rich content editor. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and look for iframe. So here it is. And this right here where it says S. RC. That's for source. And you're going to insert whatever link that you want to include in your Canvas page. Now, one thing I will tell you, not every single link is going to work. You can't just put anything you want in here. Some things are not compatible and that's okay. Some things are. It just kind of depends on the site that you wish your students to engage with. Definitely test it out, try it out, see if it will work. If not, you can always just add links. And we move on to the last station or activity, which is explore. Now I wanted to show you guys this one because we have this awesome science simulation. This is from FET Labs. And so students can actually, without leaving, without leaving Canvas, that's always like the goal is don't leave Canvas. Just keep them in Canvas, right? Uh, they can actually interact and create waves just like so. And then of course we have directions and questions down here for the students to complete this simulation. When I click edit, you will notice that, again, it is another iframe. That lab allows you to embed. So I just took it directly from the site. Here is the link right here. You can attempt to embed certain pages as well. I've actually seen teachers, they do some sort of activity of a house tour. So you can embed uh, like house tours and stuff. It just depends on the activity that you want to do. Some things you can embed, some things you cannot. So just keep that in mind. And the final thing is the post-knowledge evaluation. It is essentially the same test with some added questions that students would complete, uh, but they would not be able to move on because they didn't score a high enough score. They need to be able to complete everything before moving on to the next module. That is how I have it set up. The last one is you finished the module page. Congratulations, you finished the learning module. I do include a survey. So this is just a page within the Canvas course that has an embedded Google form. So they can decide to do this. They don't have to if they don't want to. Here's just kind of like a summary of everything that they should have gone over and learned. And then again, I always add it at the very bottom. So they like, if they skip it at the top, they can go back and complete that survey. But that is essentially the entire thing. Uh, again, you don't have to do a read it, a watch it, a research it, explore it. This could be, you know, you could rename these station one, two, three, four, etc. cetera. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a tour, give you some inspiration and ideas and also get you started because again, I'm giving this to you for free in the description below. Uh, so I really do hope that you use it and I really hope that it's helpful. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, how you access the template, it is in the link below with all the instructions, all of the guides. I have tweaked it just a little bit so that way it's more generic for you so you can get in there, get started and add your own content. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. All my information is in the description of this video. Again, thanks so much, you guys, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.